Hey everyone, it's Joe here from Limited Learn. Thanks for pressing that button. I was just sitting around and um, looking at an idea to come up with a video that would be kind of have a lot of knowledge in it or a lot of um, information in it that maybe you might find something useful. I just want to say that I am no expert when it comes to navigation. I am only dipping my toe into this um, over the past couple of months and trying to improve my skills on it. So I use a compass. Do I know what these things are? No. But hopefully someone can tell me. I've got a couple of people off the Living to Learn community page who who seen my my struggle, and they've been great. They've been dropping me PMs and stuff, and we're working on it together to to kind of dial this skill in coming down the road. And the reason why I want to dial it in is because twice a year I take um, big excursions. I wouldn't say big excursions, but big trips to Scandinavia. The, at Christmas time, I go over. It tends to be predominantly day hikes, so it's just a nice way to get out into. The, the boreal forests and um, have a cup of tea and do some do some crafting and stuff but in the summertime i tend to take a longer trip and go a lot further afield either to the norwegian border or up into the arctic circle into sarik and stuff like that because it's a very beautiful place at that time of the year but in our group there is someone who is a fantastic navigator and he kind of would usually look after all that in fact his job is to build maps he's a topographer so I've never had to worry about that. But just as a rule of thumb, I've been practicing this year, and this is kind of what we do to um, help minimize the, the chances. It may seem a bit weird. Joe, there's no kind of need to be so over-analyzing, but until you've been in these situations, I've been caught in a forest fire. I've had uh, injuries outdoors. I've had to leave camps um, in the middle of the night and, and get back to where... Um, my vehicle was so I've had to add these precautions or I like to add these precautions because until the first trip, the very first trip I, I ever took was into um, the wilderness along the Norwegian border the Swedish side of the Norwegian border and it was remote <laughs> it was very remote so I, I, I started putting precautions into place in just blind ignorance we went proper deep and you know it could have gone arse ways but thankfully it worked out okay. So I just wanted to do a bit of a rundown. This is my it's my journal here. It's the Pathfinder one. You can have any one you want, but I always try and keep um, a notepad or at least some scribbling paper just so I can jot down uh, landmarks and stuff like that and notes as I go. I find that in an emergency situation when the adrenaline is gone, uh, having a system in place is a lot better than having no system in place because it's dark, it's disorientated, you know, someone could be hurt or whatever. If you have a simple set of rules to follow, it 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 kind of stops you, stops you panicking, helps keep you your head in the game, stops you doubting yourself. Again, why I'm practicing this because for a long time I never trusted compasses, and would end up becoming disorientated and and carrying three compasses and stuff like that. So now I'm down to a good one. So this is my notebook here. It's got a bit in it for a shadow board. This is the nail I use for the shadow board. I hope to make a video on this soon, but I haven't uh, I haven't got it dialed in yet too too good enough to be able to explain it to you guys so i hope in the future i can do that navigation is a big thing for me this year so the first thing that we would do before we started on the trip so we're we're at um at our uh, my house in sweden we would decide how our pack loads are and stuff like that but we would try and work out beforehand or i try and work out beforehand just how much ground i can cover um over a safe period of time now over in Ireland you, you're never really far from civilization yes you can get into bad situations but it, you know 10 12 kilometer stuff if you play it smart most forests wouldn't be that size here but in Scandinavia the 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 wilderness can be vast very vast and it's 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 much better if you to set yourself a time limit so you're not wandering off for days now this is not saying hiking along trails and stuff that you can hike and camp and hike and camp and you got a marked route and stuff like that that's fine i'm talking about straight line of travel into no man's land so the first thing i would do is i would set a time limit three hours is roughly my time limit and before i go over i like to spend at least a couple of weekends with my pack on using ranger beads timing myself across rough terrain across trails just to see how much ground i can cover because you'll find that I, on a sunday hike you might be able to do an unbelievable amount of kilometers but when you're fully loaded down in 25 degree heat crossing rough terrain that that gets pretty small so i like to practice three hours three hours is fine so on a, an average day i could do we say between four and seven kilometers 
with my loadout on with a mix of trail and rough ground. So four to seven kilometers over a three hour period is fine. Seven kilometers into a wilderness should be far enough to be off the beaten track. But I like to combine the two. So when we get to our starting point, we say this is the starting point here. I like to take two measurements. I like to dial in my compass. This is the compass I'm using at the moment. I'm hoping when I get a bit better to upgrade to a lensatic one with a mirror on it, just so it is easier to take these readings. You can see why now in a minute. But the first thing I would do is when I get to my starting point, I'd pick my direct line of travel, which is this line here at the very top of your compass. It'll be always marked at the top. So you want to point this end in the direction where you're going. You've got your north needle in red, Sometimes it isn't clearly marked. Try and get a compass if you haven't got one already that's as clear as you can read it. So you're never ever doubting yourself, especially when you're only starting. This is the doghouse, or what some people call the doghouse. This guy here. And what you want to do to take the reading of your direction of travel is to put the north needle into the doghouse. So you just dial this in here. I'll put it down on a flat piece of paper so hopefully you can see and get a more accurate reading. So there you go. This is our direction of travel here. Now you, you what you regardless of what way you take your measurements, just be exact and remember what way you did. I still don't know what south by southwest are these these inclinations are called, but for intensive purposes, what works for me is in the house. So I will always work clockwise. So I will take the nearest um, direction and the number. So south 36, and it's in the middle here, so south 36.5. So south 36.5 and my direction of travel. And what that allows me to do is to take the measurement that is directly below this, and again going clockwise, is north 06. So when I need to come home, I turn it around here, dial in north, putting my north into my doghouse. There we go, and I will want to turn it so that's north 06. So when I have my measurement dialed in, I can put my needle into the doghouse, and that is my direction of travel home. Straight line, not okay allowing for lateral drift and stuff like that, but I know that south 36.5, that's where I started walking, north 06 is where I need to go. Now these measurements ain't exact and they ain't perfect, but I will always try and start on a trail, especially if we were in a national park. So we have our trail here. So I know that once I can find my way back to this trail, because again, we're not doing straight line of travel here, trail can meander, but for intensive purposes, this is it. That once I make it back to this trail, or a point on this trail, that when I dial in north 06 in my direction of travel, north 06, that once I follow that, I should get to where I need to be. Again, not exact. Daylight, you're on the trail, you'll know you're left from your right, you follow your trail home. It's always easier to start from a trail than to make a bee line through the forest. So the way I would split it up is once we found, once we started at our trail, I would walk on that trail for one to two hours, depending on terrain, tiredness, weather, stuff like that. But that allows me to get at least three to five kilometers along the trail which is a good distance and nice time. Now on most trails I, in, in Sweden um, and, and along places in the States and stuff like that, you will have arrows to Ardenax or hunter's rests, etc. that veer off. This is a nice added element of safety, especially if you're tired and stuff like that, that if you are going to head off of a trail, this is always a nice place to start. So after walking for an hour or two, I'll take a note of where I'm going to go, that it was, again, this is in my notebook in my pocket, or it could be in the back of my journal. I'll note landmarks. I'll note how far we've walked. This is just in case. Um, it's a nice way of seeing, especially if you have if you say we've walked for two hours, that when you're walking for two and a half hours, you know that you may have, may have overshot. So I'll take a note of the time we've walked. Um, if any other stuff is in the area, you know, rivers, again, on the landmarks. But what I will also do is leave a marker 
I found this uh, on a hike in Glenmalore that we were on for three or four days that we, on the way home, we overshot a path. It torn off, we needed to take to get back down the mountain and only four, we had stopped there to have some lunch and my brother left a pile of stones as an indicator to this is where we need to turn. On the way back, we would have completely overshot it. Again, we're not navigational experts. All this is, it's just learning. We were tired, and it was a, it was a, it was a hell of a trip. So I would probably leave maybe some orange hunters tape, a pile of stones, anything, anything to mark where you've hit this trail. Because if for some reason you tend to veer off this way and you have to escape and you head line of sight back here that when you're walking you will find this landmark and you'll at least know you're on the right track again it just it's a bit of clarification yeah we're definitely going the right way this is what we left we're nearly there it makes a great boost so once i've walked for this time i'll veer off this way i'm working out how we're feeling what we're doing how far we want to travel this is usually where our base camp would be now we may find a nicer one along this journey but we'll say here and we've walked for uh, two hours again. There we go. So what I will do at this point, take note of landmarks, take note of the time we've walked, leave an indicator and stuff like that, is I will dial my compass in, because this is going to be straight line. You are now heading off the trail into the wilderness, you try and stay as straight line as possible, that way you don't get lateral drift, you're not spinning off. So what I would do is I would take note of where I'm going to travel, in this direction so we've walked this way and then when i get to the landmark i'll dial my compass in for sake of the crack i will do it here one-handed north into the doghouse my direction of travel nearest one north oh two point three missing north oh two again no navigational expert this is just how I've walked to the point. We do have a navigational guy with us. Again, the map may break and stuff. This is normally what he walks after. But this is the level I'm at. So at least this way, again, taking note of the exact measurement at the bottom. Working from the nearest one as I look at it. It is south. 46. South 34, south 35. So working from base camp, if stuff goes wrong, all I gotta do is dial in up the top here. My reading of South 35, which is there. Put my north needle into the doghouse and start walking. Straight line. There we go. So this is my direction of travel. I've dialed it in. My north is in the doghouse. My measurement is up the top. This is where I'm going. And if I know in my head that if we walk south 35 for two hours, we should get back to here. And this allows us to get back onto the trail. And once we're on the trail, regardless of these measurements, you can head back. So once I get back to here, again, just walking in reverse, I will dial in north. Six. Put my needle into the doghouse. And then I have my direction of travel back here just for safe once you're on the trail you're fine so then when i get to base camp there's some precautions that i would take then to further kind of de-stress for this trip the 10 to 13 day trip i've invested in these this is a bofong let me get the measurement for you guys oh, oh, oh. measurement uh, someone will say i think it's a uv5 f4 I'm sure there's people out there that know what it is but this is again to alleviate from sometimes you'll be at base camp we no reception on your phones you cannot rely on reception on your phones guys would like to take a two-hour walk a three-hour walk whatever it may be so it's nice to just leave some plans with the guys i'm going to get some water I'm going to because sometimes the watering hole might be a bit further away from where you need to be that's for reasons you could have animal tracks and stuff added camping at a at a, at a pond or a small lake it may not be the best idea at in certain locations watch out for animal tracks so he decides that he's going to go on a wander for an hour and he says i'll be back in two hours he's going to do whatever 
but you don't hear from them. Two hours go by, three hours go by. In a wilderness situation, you can hear some panic. So hopefully these would alleviate that. You can just get on the radio. Guys, I'm all right. Doing it. I'm heading back to camp now, whatever else. Just to check in. It does help. And you know, you don't want to be these guys panicking and then wandering off and stuff like that. So that's a little precaution we've taken. Bought some spare batteries. The batteries do last an age. You wouldn't be using these around camp. You might go for two or three day hikes and that's the only time you would you would use them. And then you want to kind of first aid. First aid is another one. I will always have my first aid on my hip. You know, I'll have, if I'm going on a day hike, I'll have my haversack. I'll have some basic accoutrements here. I am a haemophiliac. So I carry some um, clotting sponge and other medications with me in case I get cut out in the wild. And again, this is where the radios come into play. I, this is only a small nick you may see here, but I bled an awful lot. The guys at camp are a witness to this. And if you carry medication, it's best to keep it in your front pockets or in a pocket and tell people, tell people your, your medicated needs. And at camp, the last camp we were at, my friend Brendan came up with a fantastic idea that we took um, the biggest first aid kit. And what we done was we, we put it on a tree. We just bam bambooed it to a tree. Here's the, the um, bungeed it, bambooed it. Where are you going, Joe? Bungeed it to a, a tree. And that way it was like in a workplace environment. It was for everyone to see. That's the first aid kit. It's on the tree. Anybody who hurts themselves around camp, that's your man. And then I took it one step further, and this is my own personal first aid kit. And then with my personal bits in it, I put a stick outside my tent and I put this on it. So that way if Joe gets hurt, there's no fumbling around in bags. There's no having to open his tent, etc., etc. Et I'll be at camp, first aid, on the stick. Job is a good one. <laughs> Clatter the tripod, Joe. So that's, that's, that's basically it. That's, how, that's the stage I'm at with my navigational skills. I only know how to dial it in to take two readings. And because of that, this is the system that I have put in place to allow me to work with those two readings. I'm hoping to get that bit better that I can use these to make my own kind of map to dial in. My goal is to make my own map come this trip that the whole time I'm out there, I'll just be mapping the area, compass readings, stuff like that. But that's that's how I do it, and that's that's all I know on the on the subject. Like, hopefully, someone can take some advice from this. Maybe if you're planning a trip, a solo trip, especially that you can increment some of these things. It is by no way perfect, but it is just nice to have a system in place that if an accident was to happen at your base camp, by your first aid being visible, medications being in pockets and stuff, that if you have to get out of there in the dark or under pressure, that you can just whip out your notebook, dial in your compass that you're sufficiently happy. To dial in your compass and walk your straight line it, you have to stay straight if you encounter obstacles here say you come across there's a river you just do the same procedure as here take note of it leave landmarks etc and then take your compass measurements and your directions of travel again you get here leave a landmark take notes directions of travel and this could be where your base camp could land here but try and keep it as straight line as possible. So in the dark, if a forest fire breaks, a guy does his ankle in, he, he suddenly starts suffering from fever and stuff like that, you have no phone reception to, to call for help, that you can somehow, again, this is why I don't like to be too big a distance to make a stretcher. You can always say, we make a stretcher, we carry him out. Carrying a guy out in the dark or in twilight or in the early hours of the morning across terrain that you're not familiar with, two hours can be a long way to to go. So you dial your compass in, back to here, find your landmarks, back to here. So hopefully I'm, al I'm always open to tips. Again, this is all just me learning and I want to um, take note of my learning and journal my learning. So I hope that my next video on this, that I can make some improvements. I plan on making a kind of a vlog when I rock over there this time. So drop me a PM. I'm on the Living to Learn community or you can leave a comment below here and uh, I, you know we can PM through Google Plus and stuff and hopefully help me out. So, you know, you help me, I help you. We scratch our back, that's the Living the Learn community. Oh, there we go. UV 5R plus. And on that bombshell, as Jeremy Glarks would say, it's Joe from Living the Learn, out.